Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor. I'm so happy you're here to follow our journey with such wonderful people. We're all here to help you balance your life in all areas. And today we have a special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She also has a podcast on our show. She is Bernadette Thompson, and Bernadette has a wonderful website called Bernadette Thompson, Tell Us Our Story, and she connects with above she has she's a spiritual connector with and she connects with the ancestries of our ancestors so it's she is ha, today she wants to talk about how october is the month of ancestors and ancestry and she's going to show you how you can connect with your ancestors that have crossed over and how you can actually have a relationship and really connect with the people we love because just because they pass doesn't mean that we still can't have a relationship with them and she's going to explain all this as she goes along so listen put your ears on and it's very inspirational and you'll get a lot from it Bernadette, like always, I love talking to you. You are an amazing woman and you have changed my life in so many ways. You do such powerful work and I'm so glad that you're on the show today. Tell everybody about, to, you know, to, it's October and it is Ancestry Month, you know, and you have a lot to tell us about what's going on, you know, this month and what's ahead for us. So, you know, please share it all with us. Um, thank you, Stacy. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, October is an amazing month uh, for, you know, that is, I think we all love it because, um, you know, the fall, everybody, uh, you know, pumpkins, all of this just makes us feel cozy. And whether you're in uh, the where it's warm or whether you're in the, uh, you know, the Northeast or the, you know, the North where it's chilly, you still feel that sense of coziness and you know that the holidays are coming. And October is special for um, for me because we can celebrate our ancestors. And it's a, it is a month where we all get to believe in the spirits that have crossed. And you know, Stacy, you just alluded to it in that we um we live on after this life. And mm -hmm. For many of us, we've never really been allowed to believe that. I mean, we kind of, we have this idea of heaven, um, but we, but heaven is, and heaven is there. So mm -hmm. I was, heaven is absolutely there, but we have this idea that it's so far away and so disconnected from us that we can only um, pray to heaven and that we don't really have a deep connection, except during the month. Of October, because in the month of October, everybody is into spirits mm -hmm. and dress like spirits where we are allowed to think of the scariness of spirits. So there's a lot of um, ghosts and goblins and things like that. And also we can we we can kind of begin to honor our ancestors. Uh, we, you and I were talking before we got on about uh, like Mexico, in Mexico, it is, this is the season and it um, getting ready for the day of the dead. And the day of the dead is a very special way of honoring the ancestors that have gone before us yes. and that we are so deeply connected to them and that they are, um, their lives are part of our lives. And one of the things that we, um, I think we here in our culture don't really do is, is truly honor our ancestors. We, we um, I think it's the culture of, um, we honor their passing. We mm -hmm. have, you know, a beautiful funeral and, and, and burial and, you know, or cremation. And, and we do things uh, at that time. Uh, and we may remember them, you know, at, on their yearly anniversaries, but not to the, not so much. It's just our loved ones that have passed. And we're not thinking so much about the ancestors that have gone back. Mm -hmm. And so it is something that I want to share um, about my journey. 
Uh, I have always been interested in ancestral uh, history, just in mine and going back and understanding the stories of my ancestors um, and also in helping others connect with, with their ancestors. And it, it is, uh, it's an amazing feeling as those stories open and you can, um, you can understand. And I, I love my ancestors. I love the stories, understanding how they came here. Um, I'm of Irish uh, ancestry. And so understanding how my Irish ancestors came over and that they came over, a lot of them came over during the famine. And, mm -hmm. and so that has helped me to kind of go through the challenges I've had in my life. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest challenges that I've had uh, came when my husband, um, my husband passed away. He suffered from, and I've shared this before, but he suffered from alcoholism and had come to me in uh, 2013 to share with me that he could no longer uh, control his drinking and that this really was a serious problem. And you know, it, it, it became a time of turmoil and a time of chaos. Uh, it is a very difficult disease. And whether you're, you, uh, your um, listeners have struggled with something, you know, someone with an addiction or somebody who's suffering from an illness like cancer or, or something that, um, or has, has gone through other grieving processes, um, mm -hmm that you know we when we reach that time we we really start looking for help in other ways right and it is often a time that uh we experience a greater spiritual awakening because we are looking to um, we're looking for other sources that we can't handle this ourselves anymore right. and we are just you know, it, the 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 heavy the weight of the grief or the struggle is uh, keeping so many of us down. And mm -hmm. during that time, I continued to look at my ancestors. It was, I don't know, it was calming for me, and I was helping others understand their ancestral journeys. Mm -hmm. And it was during this time that my ancestors came in and actually spoke with me to let me know that they were there and that they were hearing my prayers. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, I've also shared with this that I was using the rosary and um, it was in that process of um, using that mantra, that uh, deep connection and thinking of my ancestors actually sitting around a table saying the rosary with me, that I began to really feel their strength and you know, hear their stories again and understand that the difficulties they had come through coming to this country and the loss that they had experienced was helping me uh, cope with the loss that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. You know, during this time, I was still hoping that David was going to, to heal and that he was going to uh, be able to, uh, you know, not, you know, that he was going to be able to survive this, but he wasn't. And we, you know, we, me and the ancestors, you know, we, um, it was so helpful to, to have them there. And they came to me, you know, one came to me in a dream, which we call a visitation, uh, to tell me that they heard my prayers uh, and knew that they were with me. And another ancestor came in and uh, started to, uh, channeling through me and saying in an Irish brogue, the rosary with me, yeah. what this opened for me, and I this is what I want your listeners to know, is that in this process of trying to go through his passing and to begin to live and understand a new life, that mm -hmm. um, that they were that they were with me. And it, it opened up more this communication with the other side. So when David did pass, I began to realize that uh, he, I could still connect with him. 
Mm -hmm. And he came to me shortly after. Uh, he came to me as a crow, which <laughs> you know, our, when our loved ones try and speak to us in a way that we can understand. Yeah. And many of us, we don't understand this connection because we've never been taught that we, we have it. And yeah. we've taught the opposite. We can right. pray to our loved ones. We can pray to our ancestors. But truly connecting with them is something that we're not supposed to do. We right. are there resting in peace mm -hmm. is kind of what we've, you know, learned. Um, and we also learned that it's a scary thing to try and connect with spirit. So right. I grew up with, you know, the, the Ouija board and it was like, don't go there. Don't, that's scary. And again, yeah. this month of October, we're allowed to explore the spirit side. And, yeah. and so for those who maybe believe that they can connect with their ancestors um, or they can connect with their loved ones, this time of year is a time that um, they can allow that belief to open up a little bit. Yeah. Because of it, you know, and they can... Um, you know, they can tease about it. They can talk about it. They can tell everybody, well, I'm connecting with my ancestor. I'm connecting with, you know, um, my loved one. Um, I often said that, you know, when my parents passed away and they sent me signs, I was one of eight children. And mm -hmm. so I used to say, and still say that I get more attention now that uh, they've crossed over um, than I did when they were alive because there were so many of us. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so October is just an incredibly special month. And, uh, you know, there are movies out there. Like I, there's a movie, uh, animated movies. One of them is Coco. Um, and it is, uh, um, and I think this is the one where uh, the ancestor is worried that uh, they were they are not going to be remembered if somebody doesn't talk about them in this life, that yeah. they're lost forever if they're not talked about. And um, we want to uh, remember the the experiences that our ancestors went through and know that their wisdom is there and that they surround us. They never leave us. You know, we think that they do and that they're not important. Um, and I and I just, you know, had uh, experience where I was sharing this story with another group of people and somebody asked me the question of, well, you know, my, my grandfathers, my grandfather, my great grandfather, they weren't great people. I don't know if I want to connect with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that was a really great, uh, because I, I, we have that where people think, I don't know, I didn't like those people. I don't mm -hmm. know if I have to stay connected to with them or, or think about their experiences. Yeah. And I want to share that when you cross over, that healing begins. Mm -hmm. And that anything that they experienced um, and maybe patterns of behavior that they had brought down, down to them and, and that there were things that they did that weren't good in, 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 this, in their lifetimes, that they have an understanding and a healing now. And they want us to know that we don't have to live that life with that and that we can use the wisdom of their healing right. to heal in our lives. So is this making sense to you as I'm sharing this? Yes, because I, I had a friend who had went for a reading. Her sister had breast cancer and she never told anybody in the family that she had breast cancer. And the girl who... Um, was the sister did not have such a great relationship with her. So they kind of didn't really communicate well with one another. And when she was about to pass, that was when the family found out that she had breast cancer. And they, she, so she flew down to see her sister and her sister 
um, you know, uh, you know, she kind of reconciled with her sister, but it was all those years of not having a good relationship. If she only knew earlier, she could maybe have done something to help her. The guilt, the anger of not, you know, all these things were like, you know, um, in her. And um, so when she passed, she went for a, a spiritual reading and the woman who had read her said that she wants you to know that you both, you know, that she always what she wasn't always nice to you, that she had you guys had your your interactions and the relationship wasn't perfect. But she wants you to know that she's sorry that she didn't have that relationship with you and that she loves you. And it was that that moment where the spirit who have crossed her sister knew that there was not a perfect relationship on earth with each other. But the things she did, she wanted her sister to know that she was sorry and that she was sorry that they didn't have that relationship that they they should have had or could have had. And but that she still she loves her very much and she'll always be there for her. And it was such a a, a burden taken off of her. And it was very, um, it was very, uh, um, it, it really soothes her heart, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, they do cross and they do recognize. And even when my uncle had passed, you know, my, I had went for a reading and the medium had told me that he, he realized that he wasn't always there for me and he wasn't, he had a very hard time showing emotion and, but he loved me and I know he loved me. And, uh, but he wanted me to know that he still was there for me. He still loved me and he'll always love me. And he's sorry that he wasn't, you know, he didn't always pick up the phone or he wasn't always in, you know, in, in my life when he should have been, but he, he wanted me to know that he loves me and that he, he's sorry. Um, and, you know, so I think they do recognize where their mistakes are made when they do cross over. Sometimes, you know, they'll express it, you know, if you're you're able to be with somebody who can can pick these things up and, and share the message with you, like yourself, um, it could bring a lot of peace to someone's heart because they do cross over, they do recognize their mistakes, but they have, you know, you know, they, they say they do always remember the, the good times and there's no there's no anger or vengeance on their on their part where they're not angry that this happened or that happened. You know, that's all past. And it, they they say sometimes they don't even remember those things. They remember the good things and they remember the mistakes they made and that communication between the person on Earth who's still here and and their communication on the other side can can bring a lot of peace and harmony i think in someone's life if they took the time to learn how to connect with them stacy i'm so glad you brought up that um that example you know one of the things the gift that i received in uh in all of the you know um in david's passing was opening to spirit and being able to understand our deep connection that we have with them and that we can have a relationship with those, our, our loved ones, um, and that you can build that relationship. I have also opened to a spiritual guide who came to me and is now my constant companion and has helped me to open up this gift to help others to not only um, I mean, when I, when I do a reading or a healing with somebody that, you know, we will get that connection with the ancestors or with a loved one, but also what spirit is asking me to do is open up this idea that we, everyone can connect with, with those that have crossed over and it's learning the signs and it's learning the, it is, they want to communicate in a language that, you know. And there is the love connection does not end. And, and we, when we cross to the other side, there is, uh, I'm going to use the word life, but we think of life in this 3D world, but we go on and mm -hmm. our loved ones go on. And, and often we will come back again in another lifetime, but we go on to a, to healing to learning, it is, it is not, the learning does not happen just here. Yeah. And so, um, so yes, when a loved one who maybe struggled in this lifetime has crossed over, they learn 
what it is that um, they they learn the wonderful things that they the gifts that they had and they were able to share and they learned where the the mistakes or the things that um, may have been passed down to them that they weren't able to uh, show up the way maybe they would have wanted to show up mm-hmm. and so understanding but I think the biggest thing I want your listeners to know and uh, is this understanding of this connection that we have and the yeah. connection is not limited to our loved ones or our ancestors but often starts there because they're the closest they're the ones we remember or they're yeah. the ones that we know about but your spirit guides, angels, those that love you on the other side and are wanting you to heal and helping you to move forward in this life are also there. And it it and it's not a um a quick, it isn't often. Sometimes you know, I, I am connected with the IONS Association. It's the International Association of Near Death Studies. And sometimes when somebody has a near-death experience, they have a dramatic opening where that that opening happens in in an instant. And not all of us have that, but it can happen. But there are ways, my, when my ancestors came to me, that was pretty dramatic. It happened in a short amount of time and made me know that I needed to learn more and I, and that it was learning more was um, going to fill me and heal me and bring me to another level. And so that's the work that I do with people is to help them understand we can go back and look at the ancestors so they know more. We can talk about maybe the things that didn't go so well with loved ones and the hurt that you're feeling or the, and what you're hoping to release. And we can also open the ways to communicate with the other side and Mm -hmm. how um, this, it is how we're raising our consciousness and Mm -hmm. understanding that uh, we are one. You know, we, we always, we think that this, there's this big wall and that they are so far away from us. And I have learned over these last years, these last 10 years or 12 years, I have learned that um, they are part of our lives and guiding us. Mm -hmm. And so now they're asking me to share this and to teach and to help people understand that uh, this this is open and not to be, uh, afraid of it, that nothing yeah. scary happens. Right. And again, that's why I love the month of October because, well, it's also a birthday month for me, but I love the month of October because it is a place, it, it's a time of year when we really can talk about spirit. Right. And uh, I was asking you what you were going to dress up, you know, for Halloween, and you were sharing with me that you had this ghost outfit that was, which sounded so cool. Um, And it is, we want to bring the lightheartedness with uh, thinking about talking with the other side. We want to bring the fun. Spirit is very fun. And, and they tease, they tease me. Uh, So spirit is, uh, um, it is not always serious. There is, we can learn so much. And when you learn to connect with your loved one, they show up in ways that are very funny and they're like, all right, okay. You know, so there are really good things to, um, so I, I, I want people to know that it isn't all sad. Even if you are carrying grief with you right now, it's not, um, it's not all sad and that there is, laughter and love and experiencing uh, the wonderful things. Um, and there, you know, I was talking about, there's a few um, animated movies about the Day of the Dead, which is good to start with if you're a little worried about spirit, you know, if you're, yeah. um, but there's also this great, there's a documentary called Life with Ghosts. Mm-hmm. And 
it is about um, this man, his, I, I, his name is Stephen. I don't remember his last name at this moment, but I can look it up for you and share that with your audience. Um, but it's Life with Ghosts, and it's this documentary that he did when it, it was about when his father passed away and right. his mother was struggling with his passing. Yes. And they had a neighbor who, mm -hmm. who was her best friends whose husband had also passed. And right. she learned how to automatic write with him, which means that you are getting messages, you're sitting quietly and you you have a pad, you know, you have paper and pen and you are allowing the spirit to come in and talk to you and you get messages from them that way. Yeah. And so this neighbor, one came over to share with his mom when his dad had passed that she had got a message from his dad and his mom was said, get out. Like, I don't want to hear this. This is not something I want to, you know, and she was really afraid of this whole idea. And she wanted to talk to her, um, her rabbi to ask them, you know, is this possible? Can we do this? So Stephen, her son, who was a, a journalist, well-known journalist, I'm just uh, forgetting his name, he decided to do a documentary. And so they went through this where they um, he interviewed all different types of, of people that be, believed in the metaphysical side of the world, were, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the side, that side, and also those uh, psychiatrists who did not believe in it. And... Yeah. He, um, both his mom and the and the, the neighbor were the uh, subjects of this um, of this documentary, and there was also a woman who had lost her husband and who was grieving deeply, who was a part of this, and how she came to understand that she could connect with him, and how that lifted her um, so much. So, you know, there is. There, there are things out there that I can share with people to uh, begin to understand. Yes. But I really would love to uh, connect with those that are struggling and uh, wanting, needing to maybe do some of this work and to lift the grief that they are feeling and to know that um, connecting with spirit can be so... Um, so healing yeah. and loving and that can change their life yes. so that they, they will learn that they can enjoy staying here on this earth without the loved one that they're missing yeah. and still share it with them. Right. You know, still say, um, and I can't remember if I shared this story they may have been in a previous one, but my my mom, her sign to us was a was a yellow wrangler. She yeah. had Alzheimer's as she was passing, and she was just fascinated with yellow cars, but particularly yellow wranglers. Yeah. And when she passed, that was a sign for all of us. All, right. She had one grandchildren, and it was, all of the grandchildren knew that that was her sign. And my mm -hmm. son was at a um, uh, at lacrosse game in high school, and he not only scored the tying goal, but he scored the winning goal that was in overtime. Yeah, and um, it was huge. So he was so excited, and he came running off the field to me. And one of the first things he said, "Did you see the yellow Wrangler in the parking lot?" <laughs> I felt like my mom and dad who had both crossed at that point that Gam and Poppy were with him mm -hmm. and so you know I share that there there is so much can be so much joy too um so that's kind of what you know was on my mind today so how are you feeling as I'm sharing all this I feel like my brain is going into so many different directions as you speak. It's like hard to even concentrate. And I'm not really sure why that's happening. But I do feel that it, there is a need for us to start showing people how to connect because everybody has different types of connections that, you know, they how they connect with the other side. And what are some of the things that people can do 
if they want to connect with their loved ones, with the, the loved ones who have passed their ancestors to learn more. Because I know when I went for a reading, it wasn't just angels or angel guides or people, you know, like my grandparents who had passed. There was, you know, I was told that they were a cluster of people around and, you know, people that I didn't even think about. Like, you know, my grandmother from my father's side of the family, she passed when my father was 18. So I didn't even know her, but supposedly she is watching over me all the time. And then, you know, my mother had a miscarriage when she was very young you know, and she was, and I was told that he watches over me. And, you know, so people who I didn't even think about are there. Mm -hmm. And you know, so there is, there's ways to connect with people. There's things that, you know, people watching over the set that we don't even realize, but how can individuals who really want to connect. And, and I'm going to say a lot of people are interested in, in the people who just recently connect. How can they start gaining that spiritual connection with the other side? What, you know, you did the rosary beads, but what are some of the things that you would suggest for individuals and like for certain signs, like, you know, for you, as soon as you saw the crow, you knew it was your husband. Yeah. Like, you know, how did you know? How do people are going to know yeah, that is, that's great. Well, there's a couple of things I want to say. It is a process and it is good to work with somebody who it, it's hard to do it on your own mm -hmm. uh, because there is, there's this level of disbelief mm -hmm. before you've had the signs that you feel like you've really connected with or before you, and there is this um, it's processing the grief as well. And, you know, one of the things I'm trained in grief and trauma, I have worked not only in, in with middle school students who had gone through a lot of trauma, but I've also worked with, um, in, with elders and helping them through the transitions and, and the grief that is going on with families as they're losing their, as they're losing their elder loved ones. And so part of the process is getting an understanding of your grief as you're wanting to connect with your loved ones um and so it's a twofold thing yeah so so that is part of it uh but the part about um it is your loved ones so david with the crow when he the first, you know it was like two weeks later and this crow i was walking the dog and this crow is crowing and crowing and following me on this long dog walk and by the time i got to the end of it i'm like this is him this is this is him showing up and i was thinking to myself why is he a crow what would make him a crow <laughs> And, you know, crows are special, you know, there's all this spiritual stuff around crows and it's fun to learn about spiritual things as, as I went through the process and, you know, I've taken others through the process, but how, what he did is he validated that it was him. So, and it wasn't, it was on my way home from the dog park. I had taken the dog to the dog park and in my mind, I'm thinking, why is he, why is he a crow? I must be making this up. Mm -hmm. And in the yard, I was stopped at a stop sign. And in the yard next to me, I look over and there is a, a, a little um, row of plastic crows in the, on the lawn and like in a line. And people use crows as, you know, um, and I started thinking, David used to tell me this story. He, where he worked, he had to take a, a ferry and on his ride to the ferry, there was, he called her the crow lady and outside her home, she had a row of crows and she dressed them up in outfits, depending on the season. So at Christmas, they were all little Santas, you know, or they were wearing, you know, hearts or whatever for the, mm -hmm. and that was his sign to me when I thought of that story. I'm like, he's, he's confirming to me that he is the crow. And, right. and then it, yeah, I remember another time when I said to him, I was uh, waking up and saying, well, I don't know if I believe that you're a crow. If you really are a crow, can you, um, can you give me another sign? So I'm driving to work and I'm stopped, traffic stopped and a crow 
flies out of a tree across my car and stops on the telephone line right next to me and while I'm stopped in traffic. And that was the same morning that I asked for a sign. So you begin to have this connection and they begin to speak to you. And yes. so there are definitely ways that you can understand um, that they are with you. And uh, and it is, it is helpful to open that communication um, because uh, when you're struggling in, in the grief, uh, in my grief, one of my children was was really struggling mm -hmm. and I felt like I couldn't do anything else. And I yeah. remember in this one meditation, I, I felt David was with me and I literally gave them to mm -hmm. him and said, please, I, I need you to take them now and you to help them. And mm -hmm. so there's that kind of work that can be done as well. So there's there's so much as we begin to open up to this beautiful connection that we have and uh, that there is help for us and yeah. that the process can be eased and our suffering and our, our hurt can be eased as we understand that... Um, they are there with us and that not only them, um, but that there are higher beings that are trying to help us uh, navigate our life here. That is so powerful. You know, I, I, I think, you know, for so many people, one of the biggest things is when you lose a loved one, it's, you know, they're, phys they're spiritually with us, but physically we grieve because we can't touch them anymore. We can't hear their voice where, you know, we, we can't, you know, give them a hug and feel and have, have someone hug us back. And it, it's those type of things. I think that, that make people grieve so much. And, you know, um, I think it's so important that people, um, understand that because they're, they're physically not with us anymore, when they pass, their body deteriorates, but their spirit rises and their spirit, you know, crosses over, but they always can come back. And when mm -hmm. we call them, they listen when they, when we, when we, um, when they, when they, they hear us, our needs, our wants, they, they come, they come to us and it's, it's being able to believe and, and let go of that disbelief, being able to, um, you know, uh, open your mind and really start to, you know, connect with the spiritual world and really, you know, find a way that makes you feel close. Now, um, you know, you do the rosary beads. I love to meditate and do the chakra bowls and speak to the spirits and clear my mind. And, and I start to feel this level of calmness, which brings me to a different level. And then I start feeling different. I start feeling lighter. I start feeling connected. And then things afterwards start to happen throughout the day. And I feel also when we open our minds and we let go of the disbelief and we start to understand the spiritual world, I think, I think we get signals all the time. And then, you know, trust in our inner instincts too. When our inner instinct speaks to us, we need to listen because that's, you know, that's them talking, you know, that's our, you know, and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's important that people, you know, if they really want to connect with their loved ones, they have to believe. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, um, you know, it's so true. And as you learn about ways that they can connect with us, you and I have talked about before the Claire's which is clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant, clair, clairvoyant, which is ways that um, we know as it, many of us, it, those who have lost loved ones, I've often gone to um, somebody, you know, like me that can have a connection with the other side. And, um, but when I started out, I didn't have, I didn't think I had any of those things. And, you know, you were just talking about missing the hugs of, um, there are times that I literally have felt, I felt a, a, a hand on my back. Yes. And 
there are energy, this is all energy, and there is ways that you can connect with the energy of your loved one. Um, it is, you know, for example, sometimes you may actually hear them. I remember uh, talking with somebody, I had gone to somebody after uh, David had passed, and they um, said to me, um, so do you, what Claire's are, you know, on what? you know and I said I said I sense things you know I do have that feeling of sensing things um but I was saying but I'm not clairaudi meaning that that you hear things so yeah. that so that but the very next morning I awoke to hearing a voice inside in a male voice saying Bernadette and I realized that that was spirit saying to me you are clear you are clear audience so even if you think you don't connect at all and you don't have any of these ways of connecting with the other side, it is yeah. only because you, um, your level of um, um, feeling comfortable believing, and this is again, going back to the spirits of October, you yeah. know, we thought that spirits aren't good. And so the idea makes us fearful. And yeah. I want you to know, I grew up in a very Catholic family, uh, not a practicing Catholic now, but that still is a very something that's still with me. But mm -hmm. across so many spiritual modalities, there has been that don't connect, don't connect. But there yeah. are some spiritual modalities that that was the way they were raised, that of yeah. course we connect with our ancestors. Of course we know that the spirits are on the other side. Yeah. So it is just a way of getting more comfortable with it. And right. that's why, um, and that's why sometimes it's hard to do it on your own because it is learning different ways to, to open up to it and to feel comfortable and to allow yourself to not feel comfortable with them, some things, but find a way that does feel comfortable with you. Yes. Yes, 100%. Now, from our conversation today, what are some important aspects that you'd like to emphasize to the listeners? I think that um, that we that we all, uh, grief is a difficult thing. And that as we go through our lives, uh, we don't escape grief and trauma. And so we're all, I, there probably isn't one listener out there that hasn't, um, isn't going through or hasn't gone through this. And that- there are ways, spiritual ways to begin to heal and right. to, uh, that you can learn about these and that you can connect with the other side and, um, and not be afraid of it. Yeah. And, and even if you're somebody that isn't ready to do it, but wants to learn about, it, like, I'm not quite ready because I'm still not thinking that that's something I should be doing, but right. you want talk to somebody about it. You want to talk to somebody about your fears and why, um, what you were taught and why you don't think it's a good idea. Yes. And those are things that I'm able to help people with. Um, mm -hmm. I'm able to hold the space for that, for the grief and the fear and the trauma and the loss and to help you take those baby steps to yes. where you can begin to open up and begin to know that um, you can heal. I have come through so much healing. Yes. I've been where you have been. And uh, whether, uh, wherever you are at, I can yeah. be there. I love that. Now tell everybody about the services you provide. So the services I provide, I provide healings. I, I do provide a space of where somebody can come and we can connect and feel the spirit of your ancestors or your loved ones come in. Um, I'm an intuitive, so I, I get messages uh, They um, and I get that healing so that we can have that communication and you can share with me what it is that you're needing to know from them. Right. I also am a teacher of taking somebody through this process, teaching them of ways to um, not only connect because we always do the healing. Whenever I work with somebody, there is a, 
uh, we open to the healing of the ancestors and the, the spirits and the, the loved ones um, who are with you. But then learning to open to your own communication. So that's yeah. a longer process. So mm -hmm. um, the healings I do in sessions and you can come in and do a session. And I often have people that sign up for many sessions so that they can feel this connection. And then for those that want to know more about their ancestors, I'm also trained in the in um, ancestry and being able to help you learn about them and look back and understand those patterns of behaviors that were passed down and maybe why those that you struggled with when they were alive acted the way they did because right. that story is there. That's why my company is called Tell Me Our Story Ancestral Healing. And it's Tell Me Our Story so that we um, we can learn from their stories. And, and we, we are asking, it's like the child asking the parent, tell me our story. Why, why are we the way we are? Yeah. <laughs> so, and my, my website is tellmeourstory.com, which is where people can connect with me. Um, and, I, you know, and I also would love to for people to comment on this podcast below if they resonate with some of this or there are things that they would love to hear more about right because uh, you know that's the way that you can reach and hear uh, you know I can connect with you there but uh, also my information will be there as well I um, I have a YouTube channel where I do put little messages out and how I connect with spirit. And I have my podcast where that I've done the podcast with Stacy um, before. And so there's many ways. And my website is a way that you can sign up for more information. I have uh, I have a guide there that, you know, so you can get started and learn more and um, you can, you know, you can sign up for healings or sign up for a longer, um, you know, a, a longer time with me where we can do more work together, more teaching, more guiding. So, um, and I offer a 30 minute free session so that you can learn more if there's more information you need to learn. I love it. This has been wonderful, Bernadette. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I think this was a great session. I think people really, you know, there's so many hundreds and thousands of people out there that have lost loved ones that want to connect, that want to understand how, that want, you know, guidance and, and have someone to help them along the way so they can have that guidance. Because, you know, they, there have been, you know, stories and I remember a book, I can't remember the title though, but she wrote this book and she didn't have a good relationship with her son on while he was here. But when he passed over, she said their relationship was stronger than it ever was. Yeah. And so, you know, there, you know, just because someone passes doesn't mean that's it. Their energy lives on. They mm -hmm. live on. And that relationship does not end as long as you are open to it and you, you know, and you're not in disbelief. So this has been a great, you know, discussion. And I, you know, you know, and I hope a lot of people can, you know, really take in what you said today and connect with you and really, because when you can connect with the people that you love on the other side, a lot of that pain, a lot of that grief tends to dissipate and, and you start to feel at peace when you know how the, your loved one is reacting on the other side. Because a lot of times we just assume and right. we assume wrong. And it's not like that when they cross over, they think differently, yeah. they view life differently, you know, and life is not the same. The word life means something different to them once they cross over. Mm. Well, you just, you know, the, the one thing that I didn't mention on all of this is those that have lost, um, lost children and, you know, that is, or lost someone to addiction or someone who's been lost that is very, that was young. Um, and they feel, or lost someone to suicide, you know, they feel that that is, um, that they can't connect or that th those loved ones are somehow stuck somewhere. And mm -hmm. that I, this is so important. I'm so glad that you um, that you brought that up because those loved ones 
are healing on the other side. And the connection with them is just as strong and just as deep as it is with the loved ones, the grandparents and the um, the spouses or that we have all, you know, that we have lost. But I have had um, nephew, I had a nephew that was uh, lost to addiction and I have had friends whose children have been lost to suicide. And so please, that is also um, a, a, a definitely a healing that can be done in, uh, in, you know, knowing that you can still connect with them. Yes, that's wonderful. You know, I, I think that's, you know, pe people need to hear this. And, and I, I hope a lot of people will respond to your podcast today, because, you know, this is something that a lot of people need and they yearn for. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. And thank you for sharing this message. And I look forward to talking to you again. And I look forward to learning more. And I'm, I'm sure there's hundreds and thousands of people out there who want to hear your, your message and want to talk to you because this is something that really needs to be addressed in so many people's lives. Mm -hmm. So yes. much. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you Stacey. You have a great day.